do we need to take probiotics? Oh my, the big P question there. Uh, I've looked back and see how much I've changed my understanding and my position on this one subject. When I first became acquainted with them, they seem universally good and useful and logical. And if you take an antibiotic and upset your bacterial balance, we'll absolutely take a probiotic to reset the balance. Uh, and uh, if a person's having leaky gut, uh, get them on some probiotics. Or, and it seems to be benign. How bad, how many problems could there be from uh, taking the normal bacteria that are supposed to be down there anyway? Well, uh, Dr. Greger has made it pretty clear that many of the studies that I've done on probiotics over the years have shown either no benefit or some adverse effects, diarrhea, or some side effects, but it seems that those studies don't get reported. Uh, most of them are funded by the people running the company making the probiotic. And so adverse effects show up, they often don't report them. So it's hard to know you know the reality of adverse effects, and there may well be some. Do they really help? We used to think it was quite benign uh, to give probiotics after antibiotics, but it turns out uh, that studies have recently shown that, you know, after you take a course of antibiotics, it does shake up your normal bacterial balance. The best thing is let it be, just eat the foods that promote the healthy bacterial growth of the microbes that are already down there and the microbes will rebalance themselves. You don't have to, uh, to crash in there with a, a specific set of specific microbes. It's a pretty crude approximation of what nature's got going down there anyway. And it turns out that it actually slows down the rate at which the microbes rebalance themselves. It takes longer for the gut floor to restore a natural balance when the person's taking the probiotics than if they had just let it be and ate healthy foods, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I've become pretty disabused, as many of us have, uh, about using, anti using probiotics after a course of antibiotics. Um, the, the most important thing are the probiotics, I'm sorry, are the prebiotics. And that is the foods that contain the resistant starches and the fiber rich foods that, pr that provide the fuel for the microbes to consume in the colon and create the butyrates and all the things that the colon wall needs. So, um, so that's why you want lots of legumes in your diet, uh, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, the microbes in the colon love that. You want the uh, other beneficial non-glutinous uh, fibrous grains, quinoa, millet, buckwheat. Uh, that's what those microbes are craving. And if you put a steady stream of those kind of foods down there, the, your microbial balance will come back to normal faster than if you took the probiotics. So uh, that was one of my pet uses that I no longer use the probiotic for. Do I ever use them? There are a couple of studies showing that people who are really prone to getting colds every year, I, you know, I get four or five colds every year, those folks who take a regular probiotic seem to have less colds. And someone who's just come back from uh, a tropical country with a nasty diarrhea, uh, and they're having six, eight loose bowel movements a day. Those folks getting on a good probiotic, especially with the particular, there's a yeast, Saccharomyces boulardii, um, being on a probiotic that has those microbes um, seems to help suppress the acute diarrhea. Those are about the only two definite proven value uh, uh, uses for probiotics is again for acute diarrhea and maybe people with recurrent colds. Other than that, it's the food, it's the food, it's the fiber, it's the food, it's the prebiotics. So, uh, so I don't use them much anymore, uh, actually. And so I uh, eat those good foods and I haven't had need for it either. So, uh, so it must be doing something right. So hopefully that clarifies things. I, uh, the folks uh, and the probiotic companies might not be too happy with me. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention fermented foods. Rather than jumping on a bottle of, of expensive probiotics, 
Uh, how about adding some sauerkraut and some kimchi uh, to your salads in the evenings? We started doing that and that's a much better way to get natural probiotics down there. So go with that and I think you'll save a lot of money on pills and powders. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.